Hi, I'm Patty Dreyer, Portage County Executive. Welcome to Portage County Matters. Glad to have you with us. My guest today is Sarah Wallace. We're going to talk about the bike ped plan that we are working on here in Portage County. But I'll start first with a few news notes. If you're looking for summer work, there are many opportunities noted on the county's website for employment. And one of those areas of employment has to do with the highway department. They are hiring a number of seasonals to help us with the construction season ahead of us. So I hope that you will check out these opportunities if you are looking for a job or that you may talk with others in your own community, in your own life that you know are searching for employment at this time. Our human resource office phone number is 715 346-1327. Um, the seasonal positions in our highway department will start in May and can last up to nine months for really great uh, folks to be with us. And if you don't have exactly nine months to serve, that's okay too. We may be able to fit around your life schedule. For example, if you're in college and you want to return in the fall, fall back to college. In August, there will be a, um, a local fair for veterans to try to find employment. The employment rate, uh, unemployment rate for veterans is over 16% for um, combat veterans that are returning home here. So we're really going to work hard to try to help our veterans find employment that fits them and their lives well. So anyway, if you're looking for work and you're a veteran or if you're a business and you would like to try to place veterans in jobs by participating in that fair in August, please contact our veteran service office at 715-346-1310. Staying with the economic development theme for a few more notes here, I've heard through various meetings as of um, the end of March that officials who are working on economic development projects in Portage County tell us things are starting to break open in a really great way for employment and, and business development in our, our county. So again, hopeful news on the edge of spring and I'm really excited to share that with you. On the business front also, I wanted to say a couple of words about Skyward. By now you've read in the news all sorts of things about Skyward and as of the taping of the show, the week before Easter, uh, we, you know, we're still waiting word. We're still awaiting word on the state's response to Skyward's appeal in the um, process. I reviewed the RFP and the evaluation criteria and saw for myself that there were serious biases and errors in the process and that it wasn't full of integrity and fairness as it needed to be. So again, I'm really hoping that as we move ahead that we are going to hear that our officials at the state level have um, come to an appropriate resolution around this issue. We're talking about a future with additional job gains for, of 411 positions and more than $20 million of economic impact for our region if we can retain Skyward right here in central Wisconsin and in the state of Wisconsin as a whole. This is according to an economic development um, analysis conducted by the the Portage County Business Council and they develop these reports and have various kinds of ways that they go about making these calculations. So if you'd like to learn more, give my office a call. As of this taping, also uh, thinking about dispatch now, it looks like the city of Stevens Point intends to join Portage County to create a unified dispatch and that's really great news for all of us. We'll be passing resolutions up through our respective legislative bodies in April and then move ahead with work groups to put more detailed plans together about how you dovetail these two operations. This comes right as our, our dispatch facilities expansion project is completed and, um, and there will be space for both the city and the county teams to merge. Basically, we will work through these details through the rest of 2013. It's a, a pretty big process to figure out, you know, all of the particulars and make sure that there's, um, there's, there's no break in service for anybody along the way and to be ready then in 2014 to have the unification completed. I'm really excited about this as it will improve our 24-7, 365 emergency 911 call coverage. It'll create economies of scale, 
and associated savings down the road and will improve the operation for the benefit of all of the emergency responders, whether they're in fire or law enforcement or EMS, um, coming in to assist citizens in their time of need. And at the same time, the citizens themselves will have better service knowing that there is a one-stop place for um, all 911 calls for our county. On strategic planning, I've been mentioning this over the last number of months. And as of the March 19th county board meeting, the draft strategic plan is available on the county's website for everybody's review and um, feedback. This is an input window now. Time for you to take a look and see how it looks to you and how you believe that it rep represents what you would like your county to work on and what you want your county to become. And the input window is open between now and May 15th. I urge you to review the plan, to invite me to come and talk with you or a group in the community that you are part of to be able to have a conversation and again, make sure that this is on track with where you want your county to go. You can provide input by email, by phone, by writing my office, by showing up to listening sessions that are scheduled. And I've got four different listening sessions uh, on the horizon. Thursday, May, uh, Thursday, April 4th, Wednesday, April 10th, um, Thursday, May 9th, and Monday, May 13th, and each of the places and times are noted on the county's website on the last page of that planning document. So there's a link on the homepage at www.co.portage.wi.us, and I hope that you will um, take a look. If you don't have access to internet or you're not comfortable doing it that way, you can also call my office at 715-346 1997 and we'll make sure that we can uh, get you connected with a copy of the plan, a, a paper copy if, it, if necessary of the plan at that particular time. Enterprise Resource Planning, ERP. You've heard me talk a little bit about this. I'm going to give you an update about where we are in the process. You may remember that this is an integrated human resource and financial software uh, program um, initiative in Portage County government. It'll basically take our existing green screen obsolete computer system in our, in our county government that was developed in the 80s and now bring us up into this new world of technology and streamline our functionalities, make, make it a much more up-to-date and responsive system for all of us in these times. We've been working since the beginning of this year probably well over 100 staff members have been involved now in providing in information to consultants that we're working with on how we use computer systems, mapping our current processes and identifying the needs for uh, our new system. And on April 30th, there's a public meeting you may be interested in attending. It's a joint meeting of our human resources and finance committees. It takes place at 5 o'clock in the county annex building. It's a public meeting, as I said, and we will have the consultant there who will present the, um, the details of our needs assessment, the validation of the information that's been gathered over these last four months, and it lays the foundation for us to develop a request for proposals when we're going to solicit bids from uh, computer software providers for government units. and. Um, it'll have something like 2,000 to 5,000 functionalities noted in it that these um, bidders will have to respond to. We'll be working through that RFP process through the end of the year and select our new software provider in the new year. And um, it's, a, it's a really significant project. It is um, a project that we estimate will cost $1.4 million. And we will complete the rest of the planning and work on change management and, like I said, make the selection of our new provider between now and the end of the year and then roll out that new system in 2014. So stand by for lots more information. It's a really big step, but it's a very important step for us to all work much more efficiently and to, to reduce the unnecessary redundancies, to streamline our flow of process and make it better and easier for everybody to do business with us here in Portage County. There's a citizen appointment that we're still seeking to fill. It's the um, position on the South Central 
Library System Board. And if you're interested in learning more about that position, it's um, a great opportunity for people to get involved in helping to uh, influence our library system and to um, connect with state officials in the, in the South Central Library System and um, improve our local systems as a result of those statewide connections through this citizen appointment. Per diems are offered, mileage is provided, and we can tell you more. There's also additional information on the county's homepage. Again, the same website that I just noted earlier related to the strategic plan. And then the last piece of news I wanted to offer you is a, a look ahead about something really awesome that's going to be happening here in May in the middle of May on May 17th, which is a Friday from 9 until noon. It's called Journey Home. And this is an awesome event that's being organized through our Department of Health and Human Services along with a lot of community partners. What's going on is it's a simulation. And so, so anyone, including yourself, can sign up for the, this opportunity to jump on a bus and actually shadow um, the life of a child who has been abused or neglected as they move through a system from being removed from their home and, and moving through the medical system and through the court system and through foster care and in um, uh, a, a hope of being reunited in a safe situation back at home or otherwise finding a safe family scenario for them. They call it permanency. So whether they remain in foster care through their rest of their child child life into adulthood or whether they become adopted. The bottom line is it's your chance to really look deeply into what is our process, how does it work, and what are the needs so that you can become more involved. We have about 90 children in our, our county right now who are in foster care today. And um, this is an important program that's traveling around to from community to community with the help of funding from a family foundation where one of the members of the foundation <clears throat> is a person who had gone through the foster care track in her life and she wants to give back by making it real for others to understand this issue and how we as communities can get involved in ensuring that children have safe places to grow up and become all they are capable of becoming. So anyway, if you have more questions about that, you want to uh, connect in, with that event, we'll be helping to do so through our office. There will be more information coming soon. So with that, that's the news. And I'd like to turn my attention now, turn our attention to Sarah Wallace, one of my favorite people in Portage County. She's working on projects dear to my heart, bicycle and pedestrian planning projects. And I'm a walker every day. I walk and I bicycle a lot and I just really appreciate that it takes appropriate infrastructure for us in our county to have a chance to do that safely and easily um, right from our doorstep. So Sarah, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, tell us a little bit about you because I, I think everybody wants to hear, uh, you know, who is this person that's helping us on this? Um, like you said, I work for Portage County Planning and Zoning Office. I've worked with Portage County for just over seven years. I started with the county as um, an LTE working on the comp plans and then moved into the rural planning position. Left for a few years and then came back to Portage County um, in the urban planning. Um, I came back in 2010. So I have two small girls. Uh, our family lives in town and we live a fairly active lifestyle as best that we can. I consider myself a fair weather bicyclist. I, brave the cold this morning to come in. It was 15 um, degrees, Sarah. It was cold this morning. <laughs> um, but I try to make it as practical as I can. Um, mm -hmm. And we, as our department, is looking to do what we can to uh, make walking and biking a little bit more prominent in our community. We've got a lot of, well, a, a lot of folks that are actively engaged in walking and bicycling. And I know that'll be one of the things that we talk about is a little around that the history and the culture and why is this such a great fit for us here in Portage County. But let's start by talking about the project itself. The, we, we call it the Bike Ped Plan, lots of us who use our abbreviations. But anyway, tell us more about the project. Um, the Bicycle Pedestrian Planning Project is to work with county residents, um, different municipalities and organizations and businesses to identify what the needs are. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the current activity level? Uh, where are people going? Uh, where, what facilities are being used and where do we have deficiencies? Um, what is the need and desires in order to um, come up with uh, final recommendations for the county plan which includes an urban area, 
plan and a rural area plan. Mm -hmm. um, this will be the first time that we've specifically looked at the rural nature of bicycle and pedestrian planning. It's, it's a different component than it would be for the urban area. So, so we have a, 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 in our comprehensive plans that we've put together, we have an, an urban area plan that already includes bicycle, pedestrian kinds of considerations, right? Uh, 1997, I believe, mm -hmm. the municipalities in the urban area had gotten together and had produced with a consultant mm -hmm. the urban bike ped plan. Um, it is fairly obsolete at this time and a number of the recommendations have been done and completed. Um, this mm -hmm. county has had a very strong history in biking and walking from the creation of the Green Circle Trail to our bicycle organizations to bicycle manufacturing companies that are within this community, mm -hmm. Walk Wisconsin, and a number of the events that we have. So we have that strong history. Um, the comprehensive plan was adopted, the countywide one, in 2006. As part of that planning process, we, the residents of the community had identified mm -hmm. um, wanting a larger multimodal network and what that what would that entail what would that take and they wanted it to be um, inclusive of the rural area and they wanted to to look at the different residents they wanted uh, feedback from different jurisdictions um, and businesses to find out what that is so that was a recommendation as part of that planning process um, through the years we have gotten feedback through our department of interest from different organizations and individuals mm -hmm. uh, working with the county parks director he has identified a desire to find a way to link up our county parks how can we uh, make those connections from Standing Rocks Park to the village of Amherst to Amherst Junction to the Tomorrow River State Trail um, and to the different parks that we have in the different areas of the county. Um, so that somebody wouldn't necessarily have to get on their, in their vehicle and drive, or mm -hmm. you could go there with your family or friends and meet up and, and have these safe links that you can do, whether it's an on-road accommodation or something that we already have as Tomorrow River State Trail. Mm -hmm. The thing that, that I'm struck by is how active so many of our citizens are in biking and walking. I mean, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't, I don't see some of each, right? Even everything from walking at lunchtime to walking for, in preparation for the marathon for Walk Wisconsin. I've heard from citizens, I, this one in particular that I'm thinking about is, in, is a person who lives in the southwest part of Portage County, and there was a serious bicycle accident because there wasn't a, a way for this individual to bicycle on a road that wasn't you know, 55 mile an hour kind of thoroughfare, and so he was really concerned about ensuring that we had safer bicycling opportunities in our rural areas as well as our urban areas. Of course, many of us know that the Highway 10 um, uh, thoroughfare is a challenge, especially Highway 10 East for bicyclists. It's well known, it's well identified, and that's one of the reasons we worked really hard to put that path under I-39 just north of the Portage County Business Park right along the Canadian National Railway. And so again, we've made good headway, but we've got a long ways to go. And I'm really thankful that you're working on this project with your colleagues in planning and zoning because um, we're able to then start to put together this next generation of plans, make it safer for our residents, but also to hopefully attract more tourists to our area who want to come in and enjoy our, our awesome bicycling and um, walking heritage here. And as part of this planning process, um, we have a uh, a blog that's been created for information. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to the Porch County's website and go to the Planning and Zoning Department, if you okay. click on our current projects, it will take you to that link of bicycle and pedestrian planning. And uh, um, we're trying to get the word out where we have an interactive map that people can go on and talk about where their routes are, where do they go, is it for leisure, for recreation, for mm -hmm. commuting to work, uh, where are areas of concerns or issues, or where are the best routes to go. These are um, beautiful, scenic, low-volume roads, and we don't have issues. We're trying to get as many people onto that blog as possible to get their input onto the interactive map. Um, we have hired a consultant, tool design group, to work with our department on moving this um, planning process forward, mm -hmm. and they will be looking at every single comment that gets made as part of that interactive map to help formulate our recommendations on destinations. Um, as part of that blog, uh, we will have a survey that will be going out, um, I don't know the exact time frame, mm -hmm. for residents to access it. Uh, a number of people do not make it to the meetings that we have with our urban committee and our rural committee, so we are usually 
utilizing that blog as best that we can mm -hmm. to get the information out to the general public and allow feedback through that blog process to be part of the planning process but not actually have to come to meetings. So mm -hmm. that's one way to do it and you can call my office at any time at 715-346-1334 and ask for me or send me an email, my information's on that blog or the website. I gotta say I was on that website last night mm -hmm. and just prepping for the show and yeah, it is. It's a, it's a great resource for us and these are new times. We're trying to look for different opportunities for people to be involved in shaping their own future here, shaping these plans and sometimes it works out that folks can make it to meetings and provide feedback one-to-one -one. and other times we're, we're using media and social media in this particular um, way to be able to help enhance the chance that we come up with the best plan possible. The biking clubs and the pedestrian groups are all involved in interfacing on these these committees, the rural and the urban committees, right? Mm -hmm. We have a very strong representation from across the board for each committee, mm -hmm. um, from county board supervisors to municipal leaders to sheriffs and police departments to residents to bicycle clubs to interested citizens, the pedestrian aspect, university um, Excellent. students and um, mm -hmm. faculty members. Uh, so we try to do as broad of a range as we could to get the discussions to find um, the best options that we can to move this process forward. Yes, yes, yes. So talk about school, you know, safe routes to school. This is something that some of us are very well familiar with and um, how does the safe routes to school program fit into this bike ped planning mm -hmm. effort? As part of the Health and Human Services um, grant they had received, they had given out many grants to five or four different schools of $5,000. Mm -hmm. Working with Health and Human Services, understanding the need for what Safe Routes to School is, which is finding ways for children to um, go to and from school, either walking or biking in a safe, convenient, fun, healthy, accessible way. Um, years ago, I, f I don't know the exact dates, but over 50% of the student population had walked and biked to school. I believe now we're only around 12% of the population actually participating in walking and biking to school. So as part of our grant, when we wrote the project that we received from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation, uh, we included the inventory of infrastructure around every single school in Portage County, K through 12, public and private. That leads us to understanding what the infrastructure issues potentially could be. What are those barriers? And as we look at creating recommendations for bicycle and pedestrian facilities in each community, we'll be able to look at how the connections through schools or around schools and what are the needs for safe routes to school. Um, ultimately to make recommendations um, preliminary so that we can move forward with a more consistent county-wide approach mm -hmm. um, to utilizing safe routes to school and how do we promote that. Currently, it is not something that is um, the most active in our county. Um, there's a number of different areas around the state that have really um, shepherded this and have moved it forward. And we're really hoping that that's the case here. And this is one of those stepping stones in order to move us forward with that project. Especially dealing with you know childhood obesity and so on as we continue to try to step up the health rankings. Yes. We've made improvements, but we want to continue making improvements. It's important to, to help everybody have a safe way that they can walk to school if they want to or bicycle to school instead of, um, you know, be transported on a, a parent's car or yeah. by bus. Stevens Point has been ranked one of the top communities in the state for residents who commute by bicycle year-round. Um, that statistic, Sarah. Yep, yeah, and Portage County was also ranked eighth in 2013 in the state as the, health, the healthiest county overall. Um, in 2012, we were per previously 12th, and in 2011, we were 16th in the state. So um, as a community, we are, we're an active community. Uh, we want options, and it is um, looking at bicycle and pedestrian accommodations. They're, we have a large percentage of people that do it year-round. I find them to be the very committed. I'm not one of those people. I'm a fair weather rider and commuter, but I'm always looking for different ways that I can travel, whether I have my kids in the trailer or if I'm with a group of people that are no, new to the area, mm -hmm. on um, finding the safe routes for us to go through different areas of the community and how can I get to different accesses across the county um, mm -hmm. utilizing a different mode of transportation. There are some bicycle um, advocates, 
very active bicyclists who tell me that Portage County has some of the premier bicycling opportunities of our whole state and that's really quite a, 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 a secret still to the rest of the state. So I think that this will put us on the map for more of you know, that kind of activity in our future. I want to talk just for a, a couple of minutes here about you know, how, how can people get involved and then maybe touch on that National Bicycle and Pedestrian Documentation Project. Sounds exciting. Sounds good. So on the blog you will find all the meetings that we have for the urban area and the rural area. Um, anybody's mm -hmm. welcome to come and participate as part of those. Um, okay. and all the information gets posted for each committee meeting at that time. Uh, we will we have already had a, a day-long workshop. That information is available on the website to see what those conversations are. And feel free to add in the information. And you can send it through the comments on the blog, or you can send it directly to me. Okay. Uh, we will be having open houses um, and different viewing options for the recommendations as they move forward through this planning process. And like I said previously, that we will have the survey and those interactives. So. Um, mm -hmm. On the blog, there's a little icon that you can follow it, and if you do that, you can either follow it and you get an email notification anytime there's something new that's posted, so you don't have to actively go onto the site every day, and it can, sure. it can be like a news feed that comes into your um, email system. So about that national, the national project, because I know we have a couple of minutes left, on May 7th from 3.30 to 5.30, Right? Tell our us more. If our office has participated in coordinating volunteers that do bicycle and pedestrian people counts. Um, we, we, count, we count cars to determine the amount of funding um, based on the traffic levels. We do not count bicycle and pedestrians. So this is our, ask, this is our way mm. to um, do, we usually do two, May and September, on identifying counts. So anybody that wants to participate or has volunteered in the past. So come out with a clipboard and. Uh, just, just contact me. Yep. And if you haven't done it in the past, we'll pair you up with somebody that has. We do a little train the trainer. And uh, we put you on the list and we will ask you to volunteer again in September. I remember seeing some people uh, standing on the street corner with their clipboard on, on one of the, the time periods in the last year. And it was just great to see that happening and to hear from them what they were doing and so on. Now, um, there's also some safe bicycling training to be offered here in Stevens Point, especially to teach us how to teach kids to be safer on their bicycles. Can you talk a little around that? I have maybe a minute or so yeah. left. Yeah, the Wisconsin Department of Transportation is pairing up with our office to provide safe bicycle training course. Um, it's May 11th from 8 o'clock a.m. to 4.30 p.m. It, it is a Saturday. Do they have to come the whole time or can you just stop in in that it's time period? The whole day. Okay. And it's the free to the public and you can find more information on the DOT's website. Um, if you just Google or, or search Safe Bicycling Training Course, all, all the information would be there. Excellent. And that course is through Larry Corsi and you just sign up and it's free. So Another one. Great. Yes. Excellent. Well, um, Sarah, I just really want to thank you. I know it's a lot to orchestrate this, to have all the voices represented from all these different sectors because there's a, a lot of stakeholdership coming from different angles here around what bicycling and the pedestrian activities um, we should be planning for and, that, and the safety factors and the best routes and so on. So thank you for that. And we're going to look forward to hearing more and hopefully many, many viewers will start to get tuned in and get involved. Next month, next month, we're going to have Janet Zander as my guest on the Portage County Matters show. It's Older Americans Month in May, so we're going to be talking about what is going on in Portage County to serve older Americans. And also, Janet's got a fellowship that allows us a local link then through her to be able to shape our state's policies for women, particularly older women. So all of you women out there in particular, I hope that you will tune in. Thank you very much.